My name is Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today we're going to look into the two most common types of LED strips and how to attach them to an Arduino, along with a little bit of code in order to control them. The first kind of strips we'll be looking into are the SMD 5050s. Now they're by far the most common and that is because they are very, very cheap. You can get them for as little as $1 per meter, though there are some variations. You can get them with much more density of LEDs per meter. You can get them with weatherproofing, with white or black backing. Whichever kind you get, it doesn't really matter. They mostly work the same way. There are usually four connection points on these LED strips. One is for your 12 volt power in, and then there are three for the red, green, and blue grounds, which connect each LED to the ground along the strip. Uh, these SMD 5050s aren't individually addressable, which means that if you say you want just red to be on, the entire strip will be red. The other kind of LED strips we'll be looking into today are the WS1811 or WS1812 strips. Now these have chips in them which allow each LED to be individually addressed, which gives them a much greater functionality. They also run at 5 volts, which is much less of course than the 12 volt strips. However, I would still advise using an external power source because you can only run a very small amount of these LEDs from an Arduino before you risk frying it. Uh, now these are a bit more expensive, but they're still available for around $4 a meter if you uh, shop around and much like the other strips They do also come with various densities and various different degrees of weatherproofing Now these strips typically only have three connection points Which is the power the ground and a data line, which is what we will be connecting to our Arduino in order to control it So let's begin by setting up our 12 volt LED strip since these strips are 12 volts, we will need to use an external power supply, and today we'll be powering the Arduino from the USB port of the computer. However, depending on which Arduino board you have, you could also use that 12 volt power supply to power the board, which would make it totally independent of the computer once you had programmed it. Just make sure in advance that your board can take that much power in because we don't want to fry Arduino boards. The way we're going to let the Arduino control this 12 volt board is by using a MOSFET. Now the ones I am using are the IRL Z44Ns, though any other MOSFET will do so long as it is N channel and so long as it is logic level. So set up your breadboard like this with the 12 volt power supply going to the LED strip power in and the three colored leads coming back to the middle drain legs of the MOSFETs. The source legs of the MOSFETs connect to ground and the gate legs connect to Arduino pins five, six and nine, as well as to ground through a 10K resistor. Now, this may be confusing to follow on video, but there is a full description of this circuit and how to build it, along with a fritzing diagram in the article on the Make Use Of website. Once you've set up your circuit, attach your Arduino to your computer and open up the Arduino IDE. Check that you've got the correct board selected and the correct port number, and open up a blank sketch and save it. First, we're going to define pins for our red, green and blue LEDs. After this, we're going to make some variables for brightness values. One, which is an overall brightness value, which we'll set to 255, as that's one higher than the brightest they can be. And three individual brightness values for the red, green, and blue LEDs. We'll also add a variable called fade speed, which we can modify in order to change the speed in which the LEDs fade up and down in brightness. Now we declare a method called turn on. And all this is going to do is ramp up each color and brightness from 0 to 255 in order of red, blue, and then green. The reason we ramp up to 255 is because 255 is the max value for the LED strips. That is the brightest they can be. And similarly, 0 is, of course, off completely. And with that in mind, we make our turn off method, which does that. It turns it off. It starts at 255, it decrements it by one, it uses our global brightness value we made earlier and brings all of them down at the same time until they are completely gone. And finally, we have the empty loop method, which does need to be there or the Arduino IDE will complain when you try and upload the sketch, but you don't need to put anything in it, just leave it blank. Now upload the sketch to your Arduino and turn on your 12 volt power supply. You should see the LED strip ramp up through each color, so red, green and blue, before staying white for 5 seconds and then fading out. This sketch is very simple but it's a good way to get started and it gives you a rough idea of how the Arduino can talk to normal LED strips and that should give you some ideas about what you can do with them. 
Uh, for example, a good place to go next is to maybe add a button which you can use to turn them on or off. Or if you have an Arduino starter kit, you could use any one of the sensors that you got in there to trigger the lights going on, say, when you entered the room or when it got dark automatically. The possibilities really are endless. Now let's move on to the WS2812 LED strips. Uh, that name is a little cumbersome, but you've probably heard them referred to as NeoPixels in the past. Um, whichever ones you have, they usually work the same way. Uh, they only have three connection points this time, which is one for power, one for ground, and one which is a data line, which we will be using with our Arduino in order to control them. These strips work differently to the others in that you don't need a MOSFET to control them. We still will be using a resistor between the Arduino and the data line in order to make sure we get a clean signal. And one component you may not have used before is a capacitor. The reason we're using a capacitor in this circuit is just to make sure that the power supply to the LED strip remains constant at all times. If you've never used one before, there's nothing to be scared of. It actually says on the side of the capacitor which side is ground, and all you need to do is put it across the power lines close to where they attach to the LED strip. Set up your circuit like this. Once again, if you find anything difficult to see on this video, head to their article on the main website, which is makeuseof.com, where there is a fritzing diagram which shows you exactly how you can put all of this together, along with a more detailed explanation. An important point here to consider is when you have the Arduino plugged into a power source, as we do now, the power line runs to the V-in of the Arduino, you shouldn't also plug it into a computer at the same time. So we're about to go into the Arduino IDE to do some programming. So just for now, remove the V-in wire from your Arduino, plug in your USB port and open up the Arduino IDE. We're going to be using the fast LED library for this. So inside an empty sketch, go to sketch, include library and select manage libraries and search for the fast LED library and install it. Once you've done this, under your file and examples menu, you'll find there's a new tab for Fast LED and open up the Demo Reel 100 sketch. This sketch cycles through various things that are possible with these kind of LED strips and are a very good way to get a handle on what is possible with them. Uh, we do need to make a few small modifications to it, but it is very simple. All we need to do is change the data pin to the pin we are using, in this case, pin 13, and the number of LEDs to the number of LEDs in your strip. For this example, I'm only using 10, but just make sure that whatever number of LEDs you have matches the number where it says num LEDs so that you use the whole strip in this example. Once that's done, you can go ahead and upload it to your Arduino board and disconnect it from the computer. Now, if you reconnect your Arduino's V-in pin to the power line and turn your 5 volt power adapter on, you should see the NeoPixels or the WS2812s or whichever ones you have start to cycle through various different things that you can do with them. As well as looking cool, these lights have some quite practical uses too. We already have another article on the main website about how to make an ambilight, which will react in real time to what is on the screen of your media center and project onto the back wall with colors that match it. With these LED strips, you really can do a huge amount and it's worth fiddling around with them to work out what you can do. So that is how to set up the two most common types of LED strips with an Arduino and do some basic controlling with them. As always, we've only really just scratched the surface here. There's so much you can do with them and we always like to see what you do with them too. So please do leave a comment, let us know what you're doing with them. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to makeuseof.com for more weekly tech tips and giveaways. Take care.